Scott Robertson's Music Biz Marketing Strategies. Now, here's your host, Scott Robertson. Hey, everybody. Happy Friday. You are tuned to May the Best Brand Win on InterTalk Media. The Undisputed Leader on Music Biz Talk, and I am Scott, your host, and a man who is outstanding in his field, but only when walking his dog. And with me, as always, is uh, my own personal Garth down in San Diego, Paul B. at Intertalk Central. What up, Paul? What up, what up? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. You're so smart because you're tuned in, too. So smart. So smart. You got to tell the audience they're smart. They Well, they know it. They know it. They're tuned in, so they know. Yeah. What's what's going down in Intertalk this weekend? You guys we, hanging out, uh, partying? We are redesigning our studio this whole week and going into next week. Um, all right. All right. Uh, um, that and we're interviewing somebody from Snarky Puppy this Saturday. Who is it? The bass player? I'm not sure who it is. Uh, that, I'm a little bit out of the way. I got to catch up. But they're all monsters. Dude, the bass player for Snarky Puppy is out of control. I play bass myself, but man, mm-hmm. not at that level. That's yeah. serious. Yeah, really, cool. really solid. So funky. Yeah. Love that band. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Well, cool. Uh, let's see. So who am I? Why am I here? What do I do? Uh, so my name is Scott. I run a public relations firm called Robertson communications and we do, um, uh, the best public relations and branding and marketing for all sorts of companies, uh, in and out of the music business. Uh, a lot of technology companies as well. Uh, the way to uh, reach me is to hit the website at robertsoncom 2 mscom or on social media, facebook.com slash robertsoncom 2 ms or at Twitter, at Robertson.com. And you can send me an email, uh, and that would be scott at Robertson.com2ms.com. And then that's all the ways you can reach me. And I like that. I like hearing from listeners. If you send me a um, an, an email, um, chances are we can have an email conversation about stuff because I'm always uh, anxious as to what people are liking, you know, what they're hating. Just sometimes people say, um, you know, I had something to add, you know, to what you were saying or, you know, or you're totally wrong about this, that kind of thing. That's fine. I can take it. Believe me. I've, uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I got thick skin. Bring it on. So anywho, uh, bringing us to this show, this particular show that you've tuned into, and you are so wise. You have the wisdom of Gandalf the Grey for tuning into this bad one because this is episode 125. Um, it's all about LinkedIn, and uh, this is called Using LinkedIn Without Annoying All of Your Contacts. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different um, tutorials and classes about how to use LinkedIn and everything else. But the inspiration for this topic came from, I was reviewing the marketing mix of, of one of my clients uh, this week, and they had a, a sales strategy that was directly tied into one of the founder's personal LinkedIn uh, uh, contacts. Uh, in other words, they were going to send out you know um, messages inside of LinkedIn and kind of use it as a, uh, a sales tool, sort of like, um, uh, sort of like, just email marketing, but inside LinkedIn. And as you might imagine, uh, being the advocate of privacy and empathy and just not being stupid that I am, uh, that I uh, corrected that in the marketing mix uh, very, very quickly. Um, and But then I, I realized that a lot of people still, in, in the business world, still don't really understand what LinkedIn is and kind of what it isn't and what it shouldn't be used as. Um, and so, you know, that's really the inspiration for this. I said, well, I'll, I'll get on. I'll give you my you know, perspective as to ways I think you can use LinkedIn really effectively. And of course, in doing so, I will advise you not ways to not do, you know, do some things that really will annoy people and, and make you uh, very unpopular on the playground. So I think to get into this, really, we have to talk about um, kind of what is LinkedIn, really? You know, what do they what do they describe themselves as? They describe themselves as a business and employment-oriented service that operates via websites and mobile apps. Uh, This bad boy was founded at the beginning of uh, of this century, uh, December 28, 2002 to be exact, and it actually launched in May of 2003. Uh, It's mainly used for professional networking. It's used for employers posting jobs and job seekers posting their resumes. 
and you know their little you know CVs that sort of thing. So basically, it allows members, workers, and employees to create pl- profiles and connections and to each other in an online social network. Another really important thing that you need to know is it has been owned by Microsoft. You know, you've met them, Microsoft. It's been owned by Microsoft since December of 2016. It's really important to know that. Okay, so when you ask some questions as to why does this suck, it's because of Microsoft. Most most likely, uh, you know, uh, in, in my opinion, and and I'm sorry if there's anybody from Microsoft listening, but here's the thing: Microsoft stuff sucks across the board, with one exception: Xbox. And that's because they let Xbox run as an independent operating unit, and they've uh, and they've tried to make that suck too. But uh, but everything else is kind of you know awful. You know you know just. Just, you know, and, and that's, you know, I mean, that's a whole nother story. But but just know about the ownership of Microsoft. It's really important. Um, So, you know, when when you're there on LinkedIn, it, you know, first of all, let's talk about social media strategy in general. To get into LinkedIn, you, you better understand the social media in general. And I'll just give you my quick primer on it. Social media came about as a way for human beings who already sort of lean towards the narcissistic side of ourselves uh, to really dig into that in a hard way, right? Social media became a way where you create a custom feed that is your own. It's made up of your contacts. It's so you can kind of see what they're doing. And more importantly, so that you, they can tell you how awesome you are, you know, and, uh, and in many ways, aren't your kids cute? Aren't you super handsome? Have you lost weight? What a cool car. Oh, my God, you're on vacation. I'm so jealous. It just feeds that narcissism engine in people at a really huge way, right? And you got to be honest about that. I mean, you can't, you you know, I, I hate people that are full of it and won't even admit that their their basis urges, you know, of, 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 as, as a human being is the fact that we are narcissistic creatures. And in social media, we lean into that hard, hard, right? That's why it's so popular because people love to be about themselves, right? That's our, that, that is human nature. So it's important to know that. Here's why it's important to know that. You need to know what social media is and isn't before you decide to communicate on it. Because um, if somebody is standing, I always give this example to my clients. If somebody is standing in the mirror, the last thing in the world that you'd want to do in the real world is go step in front of them and look at yourself in the mirror or try to get them to look at you in the mirror, Right. And that's exactly what you're doing when you're posting something that isn't about them. Okay. And that's why the importance of that, you know, making your message about them, especially on social media, becomes ridiculously important in social media. Because if you, you know, it's also like another example I give is like, if you go to a a small cocktail party, you know, eight to 10 people that are your friend, they're your friends. And all of a sudden you set up a table in the middle of it and start selling your stuff in the middle of the cocktail party. Can you, you can imagine the looks that you would get. People would be like, I'm sorry, but what is, what are you, what are you selling in the middle of this cocktail party? It's inappropriate, right? On social media, you must be extraordinarily careful not to interrupt somebody's glancing at themselves long term in the mirror. It pisses people off. And it's, it, it's a great way to have them not want to pay attention to you at all. But I can show you how they will pay attention to you, which is really good. So, anywho. So let's uh, let's talk about so that's that now you know a little bit about general social media strategy. Now on LinkedIn, let's talk about how people use it. One of the biggest ways people use it is exactly how you know how they describe themselves. Uh, employment, right? One of the coolest things about LinkedIn is in the digital world, um, we we stay connected because we have each other's email address or we have each other's you know mobile phone numbers. What if those two things are controlled by a company and you have to and somebody has to leave a company very quickly? They don't have time to talk, tell everybody that they're leaving and that kind of stuff. Well, you can lose people altogether, right? And and that that happens and that has happened. So LinkedIn is like a a contact database of people that is independent of what job they currently have, right? You see all the jobs that they had, you see all their friends that they've had and that kind of thing. And yet they're allowed to, they can stay connected to their, their network without having to do it in the confines of um, assets that are sort of owned by a company is a good way to say it. So that's really, really important. 
um, to, to understand that it's, you know, it's, it's good for, for staying connected. And I think that's why it's as popular as it is because people do leave jobs. You don't always have the time to get to everybody and people need a way to find you in the digital world that maybe isn't, that is, you know, professional in nature, that sort of thing. So it's kind of a who's who, uh, PR people like myself, um, we, I absolutely use it to target journalists um, because journalists move jobs like, you know, very, very, they, very often journalists are moving jobs. And so you must be able to um, know, you know, them as a, as a journalist, not dependent on where they are and that kind of thing. There are mergers, there are acquisitions. And if you want to keep track of your press contacts, one of the best ways to do it is to kind of do it independently of what job title they happen to have, uh, you know, right now. So, um, so I do that and I, that's what, that way I can keep track of my journalist friends, even if they're moving in and out of, you know, corporate acquisition environments and all that, all that kind of fun stuff. So it's really good for that. It's really good for, um, you know, it's really good for finding anybody, you know, in, in, in high turnover uh, professions, like I said, like journalism or public relations even. Um, to me, I think it's a great content marketing amplifier. I think if you write a good blog post, then you can amplify that very appropriately to your feed and your network. And um, one of the reasons that I advocate this is that way, a lot of times in a, in a blog post, you're demonstrating professional expertise. You know, you're a lawyer, you're demonstrating your expertise in the law. You're a CPA, you're demonstrating your mastery over the, over the books and, and finances. You're a fundraiser for, uh, you know, for startup companies. You're showing your work and demonstrating your mastery in your area. To me, that's what I learn on, on LinkedIn. And I can tell almost instantly who has expertise and who's full of crap and who doesn't. In the marketing world, yeah, you can just see it. You can just see a bunch of people that, that read some books and really don't know anything themselves and they're just out there, uh, tout, you know, spouting off marketing device, uh, marketing advice, you know, without any actual, you know, knowledge of what what's going on. Um, so I like it as a content marketing amplifier. It, you know, it's a great way to take something that you've written on your own blog, you know, post it on there. You know, definitely, you know, you uh, LinkedIn has an ability where you can write articles on LinkedIn or you can post other things and comment on different things that are going on in the news. So if you don't have time to write an entire article, maybe you post something and you have an interesting point of view on a particular story. People demonstrate their unique point of view in the marketplace by how what they put on LinkedIn and how they approach it. It also allows you to answer questions of people. Sometimes people will get in in a, you know into a you know a discussion and they'll ask a question. Again, another great way to demonstrate expertise and you're helping people, right? You're helping people, and by that, you're showing expertise, which leads people back to you in your, um, you know, in whatever, in whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, and I also believe it's important to connect in the groups. Um, if you can get, you know, get some groups there, then that's a good place to, you can post your point of view. Um, you can answer questions for groups. You can find, you can discover different people who are doing you know, something that you might be interested in in groups. And I think that that's a really good way to kind of use it. You know, uh, I think it goes without saying, but, you know, um, it is not uh, even even despite what LinkedIn itself wants to sell you. Like you get, you know, you, if you get there's a there's a free membership and a premium membership and on the premium membership, they sort of encourage you to reach out to people you don't know and email them and that kind of stuff um, as a as a communications you know practitioner and somebody that is uh, very much into privacy and empathy for the audience. I think that's a really bad idea. I think it's a really terrible idea just because of the reaction that you're going to get uh, from, from most people and the risk that you take when you are out there, um, you know, uh, selling and communicating, you know, we've all seen that, right? Somebody jo- asked to join your network. Hey, can I join your network? Okay, fine. You know, you join my network. And then the first email you send me is, Hey, I'm so glad we're connected. By the way, here's all about me, and I've been doing this for this long, and this is what I have. And if you have something that can help me, you just let me know. And I'm like, wow, you just really stepped in front of me in the mirror. And now I want to push you out of the way so I can look at myself again, right? Know where you are in social media. Know 
that you are about to step in front of somebody who's having a great time looking at themselves in the mirror. Okay. Don't ever do that. Not cool. Not cool. Not cool. And I, and in the end of the show, I'm going to give you some tips about how to, uh, you know, kind of how you can use LinkedIn without annoying people and kind of really get into the tips. But I thought I would, I'd lay that out there. There's a lot of good articles about this. Um, there's one kind of funny one. There's, uh, if you just typed in LinkedIn and annoying, you can see all the different things that you should not do on uh, LinkedIn. There's a uh, one story called 13 things that really annoy people on LinkedIn. And I won't go into uh, to all of them in detail, but uh, you know, here's a, here's a good one. Uh, don't use a logo as your profile image. I know exactly. I've, I've seen people use a logo like, like, Hey, this is our company that shows that you have no freaking idea where you are. Right. LinkedIn is a professional networking site. It is not about your company. Who is it about? It's about you, the person, the human being, the actual human face that's attached to your body and your stuff. That is LinkedIn, right? It is not appropriate to put a picture of anything else because we don't give a crap about anything else. We care about who are you. And I see some people kind of get clever. This is not a place to get clever. We want to see your face so that if we're having coffee with you, we can pick you out of the crowd. Okay? Don't get clever. Put your headshot on there. Okay? Thank you. Don't put a picture of your dog. That's stupid. Put things, you know, that, you know, put you. Okay? Don't, don't do anything that's going to inhibit people from connecting with you. You're on the damn site so people can connect with you. So don't do anything stupid like put a picture of your dog and then they're trying, because it's like, I don't want to, maybe I don't want to connect with your dog. I definitely don't want to connect with your dog on a, on a professional social network. So, you know what I'm saying? Don't do that. Uh, so, you know, spelling and grammar really count, right? You're, make sure you're not making typos on your LinkedIn profile, okay? Make sure your LinkedIn profile um, says what you do. It says, you know, says what you do. You know, some people put all these these clever BS words, and I create solutions for it. Don't use the word solutions. Smack yourself in the face hard if you use the word solutions in your, in your, in your description. Solutions is a meaningless, stupid, made-up, meaning-nothing, bullshit marketing term. Do not use it under any circumstances, all right? Don't ever use that stuff. It also shows other marketing people you don't know what you're doing. So, so don't do that. If solution is in your thing right now, get rid of it right now. Just go in there, delete it, get rid of it. And that's just a few uh, tips that I have about link, how to use LinkedIn right now without annoying your contacts. Come on back. We're going to talk about who's winning and losing. And I am going to give you those tips on how to use LinkedIn later. So we'll see you in a few. Thanks. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release, and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. 
Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. May the best brand win with Scott Robertson's Music Biz Marketing Strategies. Now, here's your host, Scott Robertson. Hey, hey, everybody, it is Friday, and you are tuned to May the Best Brand Win on Inner Talk, the undisputed leader in music biz talk. And I am Scott, your host, hanging out with Paul. We're chatting, talking it up. Paul, do you use the LinkedIn? Uh, not that much. I, I need to I need to build it out more now that I'm build a it. full-fledged professional. I should start acting like one. There you go. There you go. One of the funniest lines in Deadpool 2 is um, they're trying to, they're, they're thinking about building their super team. And uh, uh, the, the Wii's character looks over at Deadpool and says, we got to get back on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> the, the additions. <laughs> I got to say, though, I, I think there's one person that that is allowed to use a picture of a dog for their profile name and should be allowed to use the word solution in the description of their services, and that's John Wick. John Wick can do whatever he wants. John, John Wick would just the, shoot you down. The, the, the dog is relevant, and he certainly provides solutions for when you have a problem. <laughs> so it's Big all about context. Big, did you see John Wick 3, by the way? I did. So good. So freaking good. I, I, I mean, even... the, the dog choreography was oh, amazing. Oh, yeah. That was the awesome. The dog fights? That I, was insane. I was thinking, like, why haven't, like, this is going to be the next car chases now, I think. Like, I was like, how come nobody, no one's done this before? This is so rad. Man, you've never seen dogs take people apart like that no, before. No, no. I was, I, I was looking at there just going, that's amazing. Oh, and the then other I... thing what John Wick that I thought was cool, by the way, mm. is he's one of the only action heroes that reloads in the middle of killing somebody. Uh huh. I was in actually, the middle of ki- yeah. I, I was just Go gonna ahead. bring it up. I saw a, a video of uh, Keanu going through the gun training where he's actually doing all I that bet. stuff on on a range in real time, doing that crazy shotgun re- reloading move, and yeah, yeah, it's really impressive. Like he knows how to do this stuff for real. Plus, he's a bass player, which just makes him awesome. Mm. Keanu's you know pretty it. awesome. You, he's awesome. Hey, man, he's always winning. Well, let's get into who else is winning and losing this week. We could talk about John Wick all day, but let's get let's get moving. So uh, this week, you know, American's largest musician union just announced some pension cuts. Um, the uh, trustees of the American Federation of Musicians and Employers Pension Fund announced that they are going to uh, reduce member benefits due to um, their AFM, EPF, uh, quote-unquote, critical and declining status, meaning the fund is projected to run out of money in 20 years. Now, this represents 80,000 professionals who play in symphony orchestras, opera houses on Broadway, film and television, and studio recordings. And 50,000 of the members participate in the pension fund, and it's estimated that 20,000 of them will see a reduction in in their pension benefits. So... You know, this is a broken promise, right? I mean, this is no, this is nothing short than a broken promise. You pay into something, um, you know, for years and years and years, and then they say, "Oh, I'm sorry, our fund is about to run out of money." And then you have the Jerry Seinfeld conversation, which you're like, "You're like, but that's you. You have the money. That's why we paid in the money so that you don't run out of money. Is is that's why you have that, right? And then of course lawyers get involved and and look out uh, from there. But this is all kinds of losing. This is all. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put it in losing from a money management standpoint, from a uh, all the lawyers that are about to get involved with this and sue this thing into oblivion, uh, you know, and, and and all that. But mainly for the the fund had assets of 1.8 billion dollars and they have liabilities of three billion, so they're at a 60 percent funding threshold, right? And I encourage you to read more about this story on NPR um, uh, recently. So you can you can check that whole thing out, but man, and it goes and it goes into the the whole thing. But man, this is all kinds of losing, and certainly it's um it's not good when you pay into a pension for years and years and years, and then suddenly they're going to reduce your benefits. It's like because you don't have the ability to reduce the amount of money that you pay in because you already done paid it in, right? Um, you know, if it's starting to sound like Social Security in our larger situation in this country, then yes, exactly, it's exactly what it sounds like. But that's all kinds of losing, and that's going to get bad. That's going to get a lot worse, believe me. 
nasty. Uh, man. So, you know, you've heard a lot about 5G cell phones, and I, and I probably should, should say this. So the BBC conducted its first broadcast over 5G, uh, and they immediately hit their data cap. <laughs> so uh, there's, you know, basically the 5G thing kind of worked over in the in the UK or whatever, and they, and they used EE, one of the UK's cellular providers. They fired up the e- 5G network in, you know, that is available in like six cities, and then they uh, did a live streaming report, and then they hit their data cap instant, almost instantly, and then they weren't able to send anything else out. So that's the thing with 5G, right? Is that, yeah, great, wonderful, love what you can do, but the data caps are going to have to be re-examined in the context of a new network. And also while we're talking about 5G, um, I noticed that AT&T is now marketing this thing called 5G Evolution. Now, are you ready for some serious marketing bull crap coming your way? Uh, check this out. The AT&T says, it's 5G evolution. It's not 5G, but it's it will be 5G uh, at some point. And at some point when everybody else has 5G, you'll be one of the first. And then you're like, so it's 4G. So, so uh, and, you know, allow me to cut through the crap. It's 4G that you're marketing as 5G. Is that is that correct? You know, and and that is correct. That is it's just technically 100 percent accurate that they are marketing 4G as 5G, but they call it 5G evolution. And, you know, uh, you know, if somebody from at and is listening, you know, I apologize in advance. But, man, that is the reason people don't trust marketing is crap like that. Right. Where it's like, you know, it's not 5G. You know, it's not. Right. No, no, it's 5G evolution. It's uh, it's like skim milk of 5G. It's like, what the hell are you even talking about? You know, so losing, losing for the data cap thing, losing 5G evolution, lots of stupid floating around the world. And and none of that is going to, you know, necessarily benefit, you know, consumers. But I'm sure that the um, uh, uh, wireless companies are frothing at the mouth at the fact of being able to hit your data cap faster and charge you for more packets of data. Loving that. Losing. Uh, Here's something that's winning I thought was kind of cool. Biodegradable coffee cups that are embedded with seeds and they grow into trees when you throw them away. Right? Super cool. Lo- I mean, love it. I don't, you know, don't know if it's t- completely cost effective, but basically there is a, you, you definitely need to go check this out. It's, um, it's a new coffee cup that has been, uh, you know, created that has seeds built into the paper and, um, you know, it's got a, what California wildflower flower seed mix or whatever. And then you just kind of, if you throw the cup away, uh, you know, even if you throw the damn thing on the ground, it turns into plants and trees and stuff. And, uh, yeah, now somebody's thinking. I mean, like I said, uh, you know, I don't imagine McDonald's is going or Starbucks is going to jump right into this because it may be more expensive to put seeds in the coffee cup than, uh, you know, not. And obviously the material that you make it out of has got to work that way. But, um, you know, uh, it comes from a guy named Claude Davis. Uh, go go check out the video on it. You know, actually go to, um, let's see, uh, go, go, to, go to offgrid.info. And then our, our off-grid.info, and then there's a story about biodegradable coffee cups embedded with seeds. You can check out that whole thing. Really good, uh, interesting thing. And, you know, while we're all doing battle here in California over straws, and if you ask for a straw, everybody looks at you and goes, oh, you're killing the fish or, or whatever. It's like, no, I just don't want to spill this overfilled drink on my shirt, idiot. You know, so anyway, that's what I'm going to say. But we're going to say biodegradable coffee cups embedded with seeds. That's a winner. Winner, winner, winner. Uh, the North Face, uh, they're in trouble this week. Uh, North Face, you know, the outdoorsy company, um, they pulled off a pretty clever marketing stunt. They um, basically, uh, what? let's see if I can explain what they did. They did some photo shoots of some gear and clothing at various uh, renowned adventure destinations, um, you know, all, all around the world. And then they place the photos on the respective Wikipedia pages of these areas and scoring the top spots on Google image searches. But, um, you know, that's sort of cheating, right? Because it's a, it's a promotional sponsored photo and they, and they, and they posted up there and they did it in sort of a disingenuous way. Then North face did something really stupid. 
they created a video about how they hacked Wikipedia, <laughs> uh, how they uh, unethically manipulated Wikipedia and that kind of thing. And Wikipedia got pissed. Wikipedia, the uh, Wikipedia Foundation, the Wikimedia Foundation released a statement asserting that the North Face and the ad agency behind the campaign, Leo Burnett, had unethically manipulated Wikipedia and risked your trust in our mission for a short-lived marketing stunt. And then, of course, what had to happen? Uh, if you guessed apology, then you were right. Uh, so, uh, North Face apparently lied about it also, and they said that North that um, Wikipedia collaborated on the stunt, and Wikipedia's like, we did not collaborate with you. We are an encyclopedia. You are selling crap to people. That There you go. But the North Face issued an apology on Wednesday night. Um, uh, Leo Burnett uh, did not immediately respond for comment. Uh, they're in hot water about it, that kind of thing. Uh, so basically, the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, which are the volunteer Wikipedia editors, they removed all the images. They cropped out all the North Face products. And the foundation claims what North Face did was akin to defacing public property. So everybody's apologizing. Everybody's sorry. Um, and they exposed this huge hole, uh, you know, in how marketing companies look to, to penetrate and get their images uh, up at the top of image searches and sell things, you know. So I don't know. Um, obviously losing. I mean, obviously losing in so many different ways. I think you have to ask yourself the question, you know, at what cost, right? This is a good example of at what cost. So you sit in a room, you're, you're Leo Burnett in the North Face, you're sitting there and you say, hey, we're thinking about doing this bold thing. We're going to try to penetrate uh, Wikipedia with these images and we think it's going to be great, right? And and that kind of thing. That's when somebody raises their hand and says, at what cost? If they find out that we did it, what are we looking at? You know, and, and you know, if we're apologizing and all that and, 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 you know, and drawing a lot of fire towards the brand and everything and, and being called unethical and all those kind of things. It's like, is it worth it to sell a few more backpacks? To me, that's a big no. Um, to me, that's a big no. And, and this is where search engine optimization people need to sort of grow a conscience. Um, you know, a, a conscience and empathy are really important tools in marketing. And so few people in the industry actually possess them and use them on a regular basis. It's not even funny especially that side of the industry. So um, do that. If you're in the, in, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't do stuff like that. It draws way more fire than you're prepared to deal with. And you're going to end up on this show and losing for sure. So anyway, uh, that was definitely losing. You know, Amazon has a secret launch technique that I thought was kind of interesting. They call it the future press release. There's a story um, on, on McGraw Hill, uh, a business blog about this one. And it talks about um, uh, what Amazon does. You know, we talk about press releases a lot, you know, in PR. But at Amazon, they, you know, try to visualize and see into the future and sort of accurately visualize what the end product is going to be before they launch. And then they call it uh, the future press release, right? They they can they sort of define what the future is going to be, and then they can keep their organizational structure, you know, together so that they can achieve what that future vision is going to look like. I think that this, um, uh, I think this is a cool technique. It's a, it's a cool way to use. Now I'm not saying they re, they don't, they don't release this press release until things are actually launched, but they basically look into the future about, Hey, what if we were able to announce this? And then they use that as like the point that they're aiming at as their goal. I think it's uh, I think it's really smart and, and really, uh, really well done. And so we're going to give um, Amazon, um, who's under fire this week for, for a few other things, but we will uh, we don't have time to dig into that. But um, we'll, we'll give them uh, kudos for the future press release technique and something that you might want to read about and uh, bring into your own uh, work and organization. Should we talk about Facebook for a second? So, you know, uh, eMarketer basically says that uh, the U.S. time spent on estimate, the U.S. time spent estimates for Facebook and Snapchat have plateaued. Basically, U.S. Fa- Facebook users spend an average of 30 min- 38 minutes per day, which is down two minutes from the first forecast they had. And in 2020, the average daily time will drop to 37 minutes. So it's dropping a minute, whatever. So, um, but what's important about this is that these lines have been going up for quite some time. 
And now you're seeing that engagement on Snapchat, Facebook, these things have has essentially plateaued. So instead of growing, uh, time spent among users is falling a little bit and certainly not, you know, and, and so the, the lines aren't kind of up and to the right, right? The user time spent is... Um, is basically plateaued on these on these formats. So you as a marketer, you know, you kind of need to know that, right? You kind of need to know that that um, you know, is the world waiting for some other new kind of, you know, social media network or are we just kind of over it, you know? I mean, have we is 37 minutes enough time for us to look in the mirror every day and we're good, you know? Uh you know, and obviously some people are on Facebook quite a bit more than that, Instagram quite a bit more than that. So just sort of, the, but something definitely to watch. The the, the, the plateau story is kind of interesting to um, to watch. Uh, another interesting story on the Facebook side of things is that they are extending playable ads in gaming apps to its audience network. So the, um, you know, uh, the Facebook audience network has a mobile ad platform. And it grew by 1.5 time, uh, 1.5 times in um, 2018, with payouts from rewarded video soaring eight times over the uh, course of the year. These new playable ads in the news feed uh, basically allow people to try out games in the news feed before downloading them. It's kind of interesting, and and the the um, uh, the data behind it is really interesting. The social network said people who installed the apps, you know, via those playable ads. The, open those apps about 60% more often and were six times more likely to make in-game purchases than users who installed the apps via other ads. So, um, you know, really this rewardable player format is, is supposed to enable developers and advertisers to provide rewards, gamification, that sort of thing, to players who interact with the game being advertised for at least 15 seconds. And with and the call to action is trying to bring those players directly into the app store to probably install, you know, that version of that game. Kind of fascinating stuff that these playable ads are, um, you know, in, engaging. It does so. It, it kind of goes to show that well, most people don't like advertising those kind of things. But if you can make it a, like a, a a playable demo for a game and that and that kind of thing, then people will, um, you know, they will engage. You know, uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, we've got the, the E three show. Uh, in Los Angeles with all the game um, developers and, and new games coming out. And I always uh, go up there and try to attend that. So I'll be going up there in the show floor and getting a few more interviews, um, you know, at E3 and, and uh, trying to show you guys what's up with uh, game video gaming brands, uh, you know, moving forward here. And that's who's winning and losing this week, folks. So come on back and I'm going to give you some of your very own tips, how you can use LinkedIn without annoying all of your contacts. Come on back. I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on InterTalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al Di Miola, 
Michael McDonald and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? May the best brand win with Scott Robertson's Music Biz Marketing Strategies. Now, here's your host, Scott Robertson. Hey, everybody. Happy Friday. You are tuned to May the Best Brand Win on InterTalk, the undisputed leader on Music Biz Talk. I'm still Scott, your host. We're hanging out with Paul. We just talked about a whole plethora of people winning and losing. Paul, what uh, what stood out to you this week? What do you like? Uh, I forgot already. I'm sorry. I was doing something oh. else. Yeah. There's oh, something, there something about Amazon. And I don't know, did, did Chipotle poison anybody? I, I, I'm going to... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to take a wild guess. <laughs> Almost any other time you would be right. Oh, damn saying, it. Chipotle, Chipotle poisoned somebody. United beat up a baby. Oh, yeah. That, that's another good one, too. You know, uh, just speaking of Chipotle for a second, they have a new commercial out where they, they're like, we don't have a microwave oven. We, you know, they, they, they try to like, they, like, I mean, talk about doubling down. I mean, literally, you've sent so many people to the hospital, you know, with food poisoning. And then they have the nerve in their ads to go, um, everything's fresh. We don't need a microwave. Look, you know, you know, everything's everything's fresh. It's like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I honestly would be I'd, I'd be better if they just had a tagline and said, now we wash our hands. <laughs> <laughs> now we're clean. We learned our lesson. It's like, don't get creative with saying, oh, we don't have a microwave and we're better than everybody else. You're not better than everybody else. Everybody else doesn't send people to the emergency room. Use some Purell on those, you know, E. coli infested friggin' paws before you touch my burrito. Yeah. And you if, know you what wanna, I mean? if you want to make it up to us, how about stop charging extra for the avocado? That, that, and don't charge that extra for huge. the avocado. Yeah. Agree. Now, now, do you have the guts after all the food poisoning, the Chipotle, and and all the discussion on this show, which is could you could make into a, a volume of of shows? Uh, do you eat a Chipotle once in a while? Very rarely, and every time I go in there, is like, is this going to be the time when Scott was right? I, know. <laughs> I can't eat there. I cannot eat at Chipotle. I can't. I'm just like, you know what? You guys have a hygiene issue, and I can't describe what it is, and it keeps happening, and I'm just not. I I can't. It, it, I used to all the time. There, there was one next to my old job. I used to go there all the time, and I didn't even realize at the time how, how much I was rolling the dice on it. Yeah, that's Chipotle, though, by the way. We should have put them in winning and losing. Losing for that commercial. I laughed out loud when I saw that commercial. They said, Chipotle, you know, we don't have a micro. We, we don't have a microwave. Everything's cooked fresh. I'm like, just shut up and tell me that you washed your hands. <laughs> just tell me. That you that you solved the problem and everybody's using soap. Yeah, the, the microwave wasn't the issue. The, yeah, the issue was the exactly exactly right. I just I, I love if just just be honest with us. You're not we're not gonna like you're not doing the Jedi mind trick on us where it's like wiping and you go like, oh you don't use a microwave it must be fresh. It's like answer the question. It's the like, question is it's like a heroin junk. Carrel? It's like a heroin junkie yeah. th- that's bragging that they cut out carbs. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's a wonderful analogy. That's exactly right. That's all, exactly right. I'm off carbs, bro. I'm living healthy. Living healthy. Oh, excuse me. Let me let me shoot up here. All right. Well, that's enough fun for for one show. We're gonna dig into uh, segment three here, which is um, tips on how to use use the big LinkedIn. So, number one, my first tip: uh, be clear on LinkedIn about who you are and why you're there. Okay, again, um, the, clear, not clever. Okay, uh, on mine, it says Scott Robertson, president, founder, Robertson Communications. And then I have my tagline, made the best brand win. Also the name of this program, right? You know what I do, right? You know that I'm in communications. You know that we're talking about branding. You know we're talking about public relations. You know you, you know that I'm in there, right? So, so it's very clear who I am, what I'm doing, okay? Then, so the, uh, you know, some, some other people say I'm president at this company. I'm, you know, an account executive here. I'm this. That's what you want, right? That's exactly what you want. 
What you don't want is some of these things that say, you know, uh, providing robust turnkey solutions for, uh, you know, for professionals. It's like th- those, there's a bunch of words there. There is no meaning there. You just, just shut up and tell us what you do. You know, it's like, we don't have much time anyway. So clear clarity, clear clarity, very, very important. Very important. Also, and, and then look at your profile and be really, uh, intentional about what it is that you're, what you're, what you're trying to do. Like, um, you know, here's all, you know, uh, just, just like I said, ha- have your, your resume in there up to date, make sure you don't have any typos in there. You know, I, I like people that demonstrate a point of view, you know, is if I'm going to hire somebody, particularly as a consultant in some sort of consulting role, then I want to see how they think. And I want to see if they wrote something down that shows me how they think, because if they can't think, then it's going to be like this North face situation that we're talking about. And, and you could easy, you could very easily be in a situation where you're like, well, nobody was thinking here. Right. And the way you avoid that is you make sure people are thinking by reading their point of view. It's a great, it's a great place to do it. So be really clear about who you are. Tip number two, the t- or tip number two, do not sell ever, 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 ever. Just like my client, I had to correct their strategy this week. This is not a place for, this is not email marketing. This is not cold emailing. This is not prospecting. This is not any of that. The fastest way to get people to hate you on LinkedIn is to start to sell them. Now, now, why is that, right? Why do you think that is? Because some people don't understand exactly. Well, it's a, a LinkedIn says it's a pro that you know that that I've got this in mail thing and I can I can communicate to anybody. Just because you technologically can do something, does not mean that you should do it. Okay, that is a rule that needs to be in over everybody's desk in this country. Just because the technology allows you to do something, does not give you the right to. Do it. You must use judgment on this stuff. You must use judgment. I don't care if LinkedIn is sitting there saying, thanks for subscribing to premium. Here's a bunch of people that you don't know and you can email them. They will hate you for it. They will hate your brand for it. They will. They are not there for you. They are not there for you. They are there for what class? They are there for themselves. Social media is a mirror, okay? Do not ever step in front of somebody else looking at themselves in the mirror. Don't ever do that. If you have a social media consultant that is advising you to do that, fire them. They don't understand the media. They don't understand social media at all. If you don't know that, you don't know what the hell you're doing. Get a book. Crack a book. You know, learn what you're doing before you advise people about doing it. It's very important. So again, I can't say that enough. Do not sell, do not sell, do not sell. My client was like, oh, wouldn't it be okay if we just, um, you know, I've got 200 contacts here. Wouldn't it be okay if I just sent them a little message about what we do? It's just so they know, so they're aware. They don't care. They don't care. That's not why they're there. They don't care what you do. Assume they don't care, you know, uh, and, it, and then don't do that. Now, how would you do that instead? You know, I'm a public relations firm. You know, I run a public relations firm. So how do I show people what I do without directly going, hey, I'm Scott and I have public relations services. And if you need public relations services, here's what I can do. No. What do you do instead? I show examples of media coverage. I show people, show your work, show your work. You know, if you are uh, just closed a big, you know, uh, mergers and acquisitions and you're a mergers and acquisitions attorney. Um, say, Hey man, congratulations to this company and this company who got married and it's a big merger and everybody's happy and everybody made a bunch of money. And now we're all on our yachts and we're toasting with big gold plated champagne glasses and life's a friggin' cabaret show that crap on social media, right? Because people are like, Oh wow. I want to toast out of gold plated champagne glasses too. That sounds pretty cool. That that sounds exactly what I want to do. Now you've made it about them. People appeal to that. Their basis kind of, you know, um, selfish desires and that kind of thing. And that's really just how people work. So make sure you know that stuff. Really, really important. 
Do not sell ever. Instead, kind of show your work. Uh, on that number uh, number three, tip number three, write articles. You know, you, uh, there is a free blogging opportunity with every LinkedIn profile. It says write an article. If you're not a great writer, that's okay. Maybe comment on something, you know. Um, you know, throw an article up there that you saw that you liked and then just write just a couple of sentences about what you think about it, right? What you think about it can be very interesting to people. You know, uh, I have a guy in my network that is very contrarian when it comes to how the markets work, right? And so he posts uh, like graphs about and says, hey, yeah, there's a bubble in, the, in these stocks right now. Watch out. Here's what I think. And, and I can't think. And you want to work with somebody like that because you're like, this guy has a lot of expertise, you know, at the very least, you kind of know where he's coming from, right? Write those articles, do those commentary posts when you can, you know, and comment on things and try to be interesting to other people, right? Try to be interesting to, to other people. If you see somebody out there kind of struggling or they say, you know, sometimes people um, will say, hey, we've got four different versions of this logo and I'm just sending it out because I, you know, you know, get, you know, give me your opinion on that. You don't have to be an expert in logos or whatever. You're a person, you got eyes, you know, you know, the people are looking for, you know, sometimes looking for that kind of help. Uh, so if you feel like you can help people and be interesting to other people, then you should do that because that's what social media is about, right? If they're about themselves, then if you're about them too, then everybody's about them and they win. And that is the game set and match right there. How do they win, right? How can we set it up to where they are winning? Uh, and and people say, oh, Scott, you know, that's, that's so obvious. That's so obvious. Would you care to look down the LinkedIn uh, posts uh, just today and see how much stuff is not about me on my feed? You know, how much stuff that, that I can't even find myself in? I'm like, why is this here? What, is, what the hell is this? How did they make this about me? You know, and then again, I'm looking in the mirror, right? So it's like, you know, that's what you have to do in all social media. But in particular on LinkedIn, you're demonstrating professional expertise. So really, really, really important to, uh, to do that stuff. And also just a, a moment about video. You know, LinkedIn, you can post native video in there, which means and a lot of people say, well, I'll just post something to YouTube. If you don't have a built out YouTube channel, you run a real risk of people, you know, you're going to lose them to a bunch of, you know, snarky puppy videos and a bunch of fun, you know, fun things that they're going to find on their LinkedIn or their, their uh, YouTube feed. Sorry. If you send them off to YouTube, they're going to find a bunch of fun things on their YouTube feed. So um, use the platform's ability to post things natively. Uh, post your video on there. They can watch it on LinkedIn. They can watch it on their mobile devices, that kind of thing. And you don't have to send them other places which, you know, you run a good risk of losing them. Plus, whenever you, um, you know, uh, you know, at the end of every video, pretty much on, on YouTube, it, it comes up and says, you might like this and you might like this and this kind of stuff. And then, you know, so they might say, oh, I really I really like what um, what you had to say there or whatever. Oh, but and there's a, a gorilla and an elephant making a house together at the zoo. Well, boom, you know, and, and it's just, you know, that's human beings, man. We're like, oh, look, a blue balloon. Oh, oh, you know, I mean, and then we're gone. We're gone. And you're never getting us back after that. If I'm going to look at, you know, if, if I if I'm chasing a squirrel somewhere out on on YouTube, you're done. You know, you lost me. So don't lose me. Use that native ability to post. And I see people do that all the time. Here's my YouTube video. Here's my YouTube video. Now, don't send people to YouTube. That's another network owned by another company, coincidentally enough. Use, use you know, the, the Microsoft-provided resource of, of LinkedIn. Do that. Tip number four. You know, if you have a company page on LinkedIn, and a lot of people do. A lot of people have a company page. Update that thing. Make sure you keep it up to date. There's nothing worse, um, particularly, like I said, a lot of people have a company page. Why do they have it, right? They're trying to attract staff. They want to show that their company is vibrant and cool and energetic and awesome. And don't we have a cool culture? And aren't we this? And aren't we that? And when's the last time you updated it? Oh, two years ago. Oh, well, now it looks like you don't know what the hell you're doing on social media. So, you know, if you have an asset out there and you're the brand, you're the brand manager for a company, you are responsible for making sure that every touch point with your brand is up to date with the latest information. Okay. It can't be two years old. Otherwise you should take it down. You should take it down and just go on the word of mouth of people that are saying good things about your company on their personal profiles and go with that. But if you make the decision to have that company page on LinkedIn 
And it can be a great decision. If you're trying to attract staff, it can be fantastic because, you know, um, let's say you're going to do a job posting, you know, VPN marketing, you're going to post that. Well, what's the first page that the VPN marketing person's going to hit? Are they going to go to the website? No, they're not. Why aren't they? Because they're in LinkedIn, right? They're already in LinkedIn. And so then they're going to look you up there and they're going to say who, now why would they do that instead of the homepage? Because the homepage is your own personal brand of BS that you created and created this perfect experience. But what do I see on LinkedIn that you can't control? I get to see who's got other, who's got jobs in your company. And I get to see exactly what they're saying, where your former employees are, what they're saying, all of that kind of stuff. It all goes to the brand, right? So update that page, keep that as up to date as you possibly can. You know, you never, it it amazes me how many people just kind of let that company page on LinkedIn just kind of sit there and don't have any updates going on, particularly people that are trying, that have active job postings up there. Remember, LinkedIn is a, it's a job thing, right? That's, that's what, that, that's why it exists. That's its, its primary purpose. So make sure you know that for the important. And then uh, my fifth tip in this, uh, in this segment is protect your network, protect your network so much. I mean, I get so many requests from people who want to join my network all the time, but you don't have to say yes. <laughs> you know, you don't have to say yes to everybody. Uh, you know, if people don't um, take the time to, first of all, if you don't actually know them, it's a bad idea to let them into your network because then they can see who else you're connected with. You know, it, you know, it could lead to, it could lead to bad things if there's some, you know, Russian hacker somewhere and then you don't really know them. So I know some people just kind of uh, accept everybody in that sort of thing. Don't do that. You know, be, be very discerning about that. And don't, you know, uh, you may have a lot of, you know, followers or, you know, people in your connections in your social network, but that, that doesn't mean anything, you know, um, you know, quality, not quantity is, is really, really important in that. And then make sure that, uh, nobody, um, if there is a, if you hire a lead generation company and they say, Oh, we can just, uh, send out emails from your, your, your LinkedIn. Don't ever let somebody do that. That it, what I just heard was, we have a surefire way to make everybody in your network that you've cultivated over your years hate you, hate you, block you, and just hate you in general. Don't ever do that stuff. Protect what you've, what you've built. So what have we learned today, folks? We learned that LinkedIn is a great tool to stay in touch with people, showcase your expertise, and your point of view. You know, But to get this bad boy to work, you have to be about other people and less about you. Don't sell, don't sell, don't sell. Do that and you will have great connections. You will absolutely be able to get done everything that you need to get done. You know, that's it for me, folks. Until next time, this has been Scott Robertson, host of Made the Best Brand Win, only on Talk. We'll see you next week with a fresh show. Rock on. Later. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Inner Talk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one-song mix offer. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com.
This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie's Groove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Mm-hmm. 